All right, in this video, what we're going to do is put together a whole bunch of ideas from the whole course on Algebra 2 um, and apply little bits and pieces here and there so that we can effectively um, and uh, confidently solve complicated equations like the ones you see here. Uh, we've previously solved equations that had absolute values in it, but usually there'd be an absolute value on one side of the equation and some linear expression on the other side. Uh, in this case, we have absolute values on both sides. Moreover, each of these is one of those absolute values where we could see that there's a slope that's other than 1 or negative 1. All of the slopes here are different, <clears throat> which requires slightly different skills for graphing. So um, what I need to do, I'm going to choose this one. Um, I first want to be able to graph this as a linear, as if it were a system, so that I could see how many solutions to expect and where those solutions are going to lie. But in order to graph these, one of the things I want to do is try to fit in my transformational thinking. Um, so I'm going to basically first distribute the divide by 2 in this expression, and I'll distribute divide by 3 in the second expression, so that you get 3x over 2, which is 3x over 2, and then you get 2 over 2, which is just 1. And on the right-hand side, you got 2x over 3 and negative 3 over 3, which gives us 2 thirds x minus 1. So now that looks a little bit more like slope-intercept form. Now, in order to figure out the transformations, I'm going to, just like we did previously, factor out the slope or the coefficient on x. So in this case, I take out a 3 halves, and uh, w then I divide both of these terms by 3 halves. 3 halves over 3 halves x is just 1x, and 3 halves, or 1 divided by 3 halves is 2 thirds. Uh, review your fraction division. If you're not sure about this, just simply redistribute in your mind. This is 3 halves x, that's good, and then 3 halves times 2 thirds, everything crosses and divides out, and you get 1. Similarly, then, we could take out the uh, 2 thirds, and then we'll get 1x, and then 1 divided by 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. Reason for doing so now is I can make two absolute value graphs, one of them, which is shifted left 2 thirds and has slopes of plus or minus 1 and a half. The other one goes right 1 and a half and has slopes of plus or minus 2 thirds. So for the red, shift left 2 thirds. Um, there you can see I went left 2 thirds, so I'm not at quite at negative 1 for my vertex. And there I count over 1, 2, uh, and then up 3, and I get a second point. And from here I count over 1, 2, and then up 3, and I get a second point as well. Using the same kind of reasoning, this time I'm going to go right 1 and a half, count over 3, up 1, count back 3, um, oh, sorry, up 2, and then count back 3, up 2, and that gives you a couple of points. Now the other thing I made sure of is when I looked at the originals right up here, um, I noticed that the y-intercepts in both cases are going to be 1. And when I look at my graph, I make sure that my slopes are all right, I make sure that the y-intercepts are crossing. Or the, the graphs are crossing the y-axis where they're supposed to. And they're both crossing at 1. Now that's double bonus because I also have found an intersection. Since both graphs have a 1 y-intercept, that's one of the two solutions that I see. Now, what, we are, what I've tried to get you guys to do when graphing absolute values is to label each of the rays. Now you can see why that's so important. Because I can actually see one decreasing red line and then I see one decreasing blue line. I also see an increasing red line and an increasing blue line. So there's a potential of four different intersections that can go on here, but usually two of them are going to be fake news. So what we got here, though, is um, two intersections, two solutions. When you look at the equation with all these absolute values, there's actually four different scenarios. You could have where, oops, you could have where the, uh, the, the left is positive and the right is positive, so we don't do anything when we remove the absolute values, or the left is positive and the right's negative, or the left is negative and the right's positive, or they're both negative. So there's four different kinds of equations that can emerge uh, when solving double absolute values, but my graph indicates that I'm only interested in two of them. Here's the part about the rays that makes it so nice. Since I labeled the rays, all I have to do is find out which ones or pairs of these rays show intersection. The first one I look at is when I see negative 2 fifths x plus 1 intersects with negative 3 halves x minus 1. So that's one of my equations. That is to say, when does the decreasing line, oops, and that's the positive, the increasing line. Here's the one I just mentioned. The negative 3 halves x minus 1 equals the negative 2 thirds x plus 1. That's this one. And then the positive 3 halves x plus 1 intersects negative 2 thirds 
or x plus 1. And there's the second intersection, or second set. Now, there are two other equations. One, where 2 thirds x minus 1 could equal 3 halves x plus 1, and 2 thirds x minus 1 equals negative 3 halves x minus 1. But we know that these are going to produce lies because they're going to give me solutions down below the absolute value, and we're not interested in negative outcomes because it's positive values on either side. So these are going to give us lies. I needn't even bother solving them. Now for solving equations, we've got some Algebra 1 experience here. This one should be obvious. The uh, solution is x equals 0 because clearly these two are going to intersect on the y-axis. And then the other one, when we solve, we should get a negative value at the end, and it's negative 2 and 2 fifths, which again corresponds to very similar to where my graph is actually showing an intersection. So the solutions to the equation are either x equals 0 or x equals negative 2 and 2 fifths or negative 2.4. Now, just to improve your algebra skills, you take the given equation, the one with the absolute values in it, you take your solution, the interesting one, not the zero, and you put them both into the absolute value expressions. This might be something that people will avoid doing, but I promise you that this is a valuable exercise in making sure that you have appropriate arithmetic skills and the ability to work with fractions and division of fractions. Moreover, you have your technology, graphing calculators and or Desmos will show you the intersection of these two uh, rays just by putting the left and right hand side as separate y values. Um, you can find the intersections using Desmos. So. That's a lot of stuff to keep track of. You know, in quick summary, um, we have the first thing we need to do is to um, um, change the equation so that it's graphable. First, by distributing any fractions, if there's any distributing need to be done, then factoring out the slope in both cases, that gives us the ability to determine slopes and right-left transformations so we can get an efficient graph that is a good, accurate graph in a short period of time, um, label the rays to find out which ones or will yield the intersections, list the solvable equations and the lies, solve the ones that are solvable, and check. You do all that, you're going to be really successful. And uh, you might already notice how many different things that we've studied this year are, we are applying just to be able to handle this one kind of problem. That's the way math works. So dig it.